all right welcome back everyone to another video and today we are talking about ice creams uh, not the kind you eat but the kind you use to do distributive compilation so ice cream is a daemon or a program that is used to use sort of multiple hardware connected over the network so multiple systems and use them to compile a single project uh, in today's video i'll be doing uh, i'll be compiling the linux kernel over ice and sort of kind of ben benchmarking it uh, with uh, just the single hardware that you can get so we i'll be using all my older uh, and fairly disposable 32 bit arm boards and the reason is that i don't really have to mess around with it too much i'm not currently working on them so i'll just flash an sd card put it in there and it will work so the arm boards that i have are the banana pi m1 which is a 1 gigahertz dual core cortex a7 the raspberry pi 2 a quad core 9 900 megahertz uh, so i've not overclocked it 900 megahertz um, cortex a7 nano pi m1 1.2 gigahertz cortex a7 quad core and the raspberry pi 3 which is uh, 1.2 gigahertz quad core again but this time it's quad cortex a53 which with a much higher performs fairly better than a regular cortex a7 uh, because it is a cortex a53 but we'll still be running it in 32 bit mode so that would be interesting uh, and what i basically did was install ice cream on all of these uh, four nodes and uh, ice cream has two modes so you can use it as a client so the banana pi m1 the raspberry pi 2 the nano pi m1 are all running as client the raspberry pi 3 is running as a scheduler and a client so it, it also does co compilation but then it's also uh, the the system that controls which uh, which of the other nodes get uh, what files and what kind of load uh, and make sure that all of them are working uh, as much as possible so ice cream use is is also called ice cc and the reason is it only does native code so it has to be c plus plus or c it doesn't do anything else so the linux kernel entirely written in c except for a few parts in python which are basically just scripts so entirely written in c and uh, it works pretty well so what you can see behind you is uh, a ssh uh, session to the raspberry pi 3 which is our main scheduler uh, where i give the command to compile everything and that starts to compile and on the second half of the screen you have the ice cream monitor or also called the ice mon now what the ice mon does is its job is to make sure uh, not not to make sure but to provide a stats kind of a deal a visual a representation of what's happening in the background with ice cream because when you compile something the program that's being compiled or, or or the code that that's being compiled has no idea that it's being compiled on separate different machines um, even you can go ahead and cross compile it so you can have an arm uh, arm code compile on several arm machine and then there can be several x86 machine that are cross compiling the same code so it all works out fairly nice so the code doesn't know the program uh, the project doesn't know that it's being compiled in that manner and um, it, it works weirdly because when you send uh, when the make command calls gcc the gcc is in a wrapper uh, ic ice cc has a sort of kind of a wrapper around gcc and then the the gcc that is called by uh, the the make command actually is the gcc wrapper that's in the icc program and uh, that gets called that activates icc and then icc sees where the code needs to be compiled and it handles it from there so you compile it as a regular code all you have to do is put the icc binary path uh, in your environment variable before uh, anything else so that would be export path equal to your icc binary path and then uh, colon and then your path variable so that way it defaults to the icc every time you hit make and uh, yeah that's that's what's going on the ice monitor has a few different views you can select from so that's the star one i think and uh, throughout the video 
I'll be changing it at regular intervals. You can see all of them, and it's it's pretty interesting to see what's going on, and you can actually fast forward the process a whole lot, speed it up, and everything else. So let's take a look at some compilation time. Uh, so only on the Banana Pi M1 we have 313 minutes, which is roughly five hours. On the Raspberry Pi 2. On the Raspberry Pi 2, we have 231 minutes. On the Nano Pi M1, we have 143 minutes. And on the Raspberry Pi 3, which is the fastest of the lot, uh, is it's only 67 minutes. So the Cortex A7 versus A53 speed really shows here. Now, once the ICC is finished, uh, you can see I have multiple ICC results. So the first time I ran ICC, what was on the Nano Pi. And it came at about 53 minutes. It was fairly consistent there. Yeah, so that's 53. It's not too much better uh, if you com compare it with the Raspberry Pi 3. But if you actually compare it with Nano Pi M1, it's a lot better. And again, with the Raspberry Pi 2 and Banana Pi M1, a lot better. Uh, again, all of these uh, all of these machines were uh, putting their kind of 100% usage or utilization throughout the process, as you can see. Uh, they, they go offline for a very brief few seconds when they actually exchange the data from the compiled uh, from the compiled binary and then get the new sources to compile or things like that when they're communicating with the scheduler. The, the reason the uh, ICC compilation is so much uh, you know, close to the Raspberry Pi 3 instead of being like 50% better or 100% better or something like that is that the Raspberry Pi 3 is doing most of the heavy lifting here. So if you had all the three Raspberry Pi 3s, the difference would be much less. Uh, the, the difference would be much more, but you know, uh, it, it, the scores wouldn't be as close. So ICC shows kind of its real face when all the nodes are of the equal sort of performance level. So here I've just used whatever I, have, I had, but it's still interesting to do. Now take a look here. The when I ran ICC again on the Raspberry Pi 3, it came out at 37 seconds, uh, 37 minutes, which is almost half of uh, what just the Raspberry Pi 3 would have taken. So it's a fairly well, uh, you know, performance improvement. But on the third result, again running ICC on the Raspberry Pi 3 this time over SSH and monitoring from a separate uh, separate device like and this is the rut that is that you are seeing on your screen it, it ends up taking about the same time if you do it on a Nano Pi or a Raspberry Pi 3 as the scheduler it doesn't really matter um, so yeah a lot of variance uh, what, I, what I'm trying to show you guys here is there is a lot of variance so the amount of network congestion you have the amount of the, the how fast your NIC is on each of the modules is it one gigabit or is it 100 megabits so all of the nodes I have are just 100 megabits and um, what's kind of the response time of the of your router of your um, of your switch and also of, of each of the NICs how fast can they uh, what, what what the ping is and all of these kind of things that really factor in before something like storage speed or the CPU speed can have much of an effect. So if the if, if the NIC is too slow, other nodes won't get their job done and uh, won't get newer jobs as, as quickly and that kind of effects. So this was just a very quick experiment I really wanted to do it with ICC before I uh, kind of take this to just another level. Uh, now that I'm finally successful with running ICC on um, platform uh, and co compiling basic code, what I'm going to do is gather some fairly powerful ARM boards that I have lying around uh, and what I'll do is get them and have them compile a huge project. So something that can take even a good Xeon about an hour or so. So we'll see how that works, uh, you know, compiling native ARM code on distributive or distributed node on the 
on the same network and just using their power so this was kind of a project that i had in mind for a while until i came across this thing called icc which is pretty interesting so yes this is also a very sweet ice cream just a different kind of sweet uh, it's just a really good product project uh, it works very well and has good visual representation which is always exciting to show on platforms like youtube uh, rather than just code going away i know that kind of things can get boring sometimes so again if you want to check out icc or ice cream project you can check it out it's open source uh, it's mostly developed by CUs, runs on a variety of platform across the Linux operating system or the Linux distro range. So it's in the link in the description. You can check it out. Um, and I guess that was about it. Very interesting experiment. And I've actually spent a, a lot more hours than I should working on this uh, and trying to, uh, trying to get, just trying to try different things, different combinations of uh, schedulers and everything. So this is just kind of a peak or uh, a very, very small subset of what I've done with ICC so far. So make sure to hit that subscribe button to see more future videos, exciting stuff coming up and more operating systems review. I think I have a few, uh, a few one spending that I really need to do and those those are very interesting little operating systems and I guess that's about it thank you so much for watching and I'll see you all in the next one